everybody can see my screen, I hope. Presenting. Yep, it's working. Cool. Um, so, so what is the wallet? What are the features? We'll just come from the, um, the user's perspective. Essentially, uh, what, is, what are the benefits of the wallet and why does the wallet exist? Uh, I got some bullet points here that are the high level features that the wallet provides. Um, the most obvious ones that most people are familiar with is creating new named accounts on Near. So anytime you want to create an account that has your name dot Near, you're probably going to log into the wallet web interface and click create new account. The entire flow for managing the creation of named accounts exists uh, as part of the wallet. Um, the wallet also provides a, a layer on top of uh, or outside of the blockchain for two-factor authentication. Uh, so if you want to secure a near account that has a fair amount of value and near tokens on it, then you can turn on two-factor authentication and the wallet infrastructure will actually send you 2FA emails or uh, SMSs if you chose to use SMS. Not a, not a big fan. Um, it also um, allows you to log into actual D apps, and I'll walk through actually logging into a D app just so you can see what that looks like uh, in your apps themselves. Um, we give you a basic UI to kind of control staking. So if you have tokens that you're going to stake with validators, then you can uh, choose to do that using the wallet, and you can see where you have your tokens staked using the wallet. Um, a critical part actually of the wallet is the ability to recover accounts using seed phrases. This is a uh, this is a really low level benefit to the wallet that you normally wouldn't have. Uh, one of the things that, one of the things that is not obvious about near is that when you have a public private key, and you have a named address um, via the blockchain, actually, uh, if you wanted to figure out what account that was, it could be qu quite difficult. Actually, um, we rely on a, an indexer, which you guys have probably already heard a little bit about the Explorer, which is an indexer that indexes uh, transactions. The wallet actually has its own indexer as well uh, that keeps track of transactions that are relevant to, to wallet usage. And part of what the uh, wallet indexer provides is our ability to find out using a key that you give us uh, which accounts uh, have used that key. So we can you can give us a seed phrase, you can import essentially an account using a seed phrase, you send us the, the public key, and we can identify the named near accounts that were used for that public key. Uh, so we call it recovery, but really um, the account's always there, and it's just a matter of tying your your keys to the to the named account that we keep track of. Uh, the wallet also provides ledger integration. So if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with Ledger, uh, Ledger is basically a uh, piece of hardware that stores your private key inside of a protected, uh, yeah, secure chip where the private key actually never leaves the device. The device is, you know, very small LCD on it, and you can sign transactions actually on the actual ledger so that the private key that you're using to sign your transactions never leaves the ledger device. This allows you to sign transactions without actually having the private key available to the web browser at any point in time, because this is a web app. You generally want to avoid the private key uh, being available to the browser just because browsers are not known for their security. Uh, the other thing that it allows you to do is see access keys. So access keys for uh, any apps that you've authorized to use your account. Uh, if you're using something like Berry Club or Berry Cards, you can see an entry for the access keys that it uses. And the wallet is also responsible for showing you some non-near assets. So wrapped tokens, essentially, you can see balances for some wrapped tokens in the, in the wallet UI when you log into your account. Um, yep. So that's basically the features that are provided. Uh, from a technical standpoint, just talking about what is the wallet? Is this like a blockchain app or like does this run on, side, on the chain? It's like, nope. Actually, uh, it's a standard web application in many ways. The wallet has a React Redux front end. It's hosted on Render and Netlify, depending on the environment. Uh, we deploy a simple REST API for the back end that's written in Node. And that backend API is actually very, very thin. All it's responsible for basically is keeping track of two-factor authentication requests and, and pins, uh, you know, codes for these things. Uh, it, it persists those into a Postgres instance that we have just for the wallet. And most of what we do with the wallet is actually entirely uh, standard. It's a normal web app that you would, wouldn't actually see any difference from with the key uh, difference that 
for us, uh, we are a non-custodial wallet. And what non-custodial wallet means is that we don't want your private keys. We don't want you to send them to us. We don't want to take possession or custody of the private keys for our users. And the reason for that is that it, it simplifies uh, our risk profile massively. And a lot of people are really uh, security conscious and they don't want their private key to be sent across the wire uh, every time that they're gonna, <laughs> gonna interact with something. Uh, there are custodial wallets out there where you actually send them your private key and they will do interactions for you with the blockchain entirely, but that's not us. So for us, the, um, the front end actually is what's responsible for doing most of the submission of uh, transactions to the blockchain. Uh, the only thing that the back end is used for, for actual uh, blockchain interactions is for s operations that require secrets. So one example of that is in order to create an account under, uh, under the dot near the uh, top level near account, uh, we actually use a private key for that near account that we don't want the browser to have. And that allows people to create you know, Daryl.near, for example, uh, without actually having the key for the near account that would, you know, that would allow them to directly interact with blockchain and do things like mass create accounts and stuff like that, where obviously we want that to be gated based on the wallet usage. Um, so at a high level, the, that's the basics of the, the wallet from a technical standpoint. It's a pretty standard application. I was just going to do a brief uh, walkthrough actually of uh, what the wallet looks like so that you can kind of tie these uh, bullet points to a reality. What does it actually look like? And so for most people, when they access the wallet here, what they see is, you know, the initial time you first open it, it's a really simple interface where the only options that you have are to import an existing account using a recovery method that we maintain, or seed phrase, uh, or you can create a brand new account, which allows you to create a named near account. And this is what most people consider the wallet. Uh, you know, this is their first interaction actually with near uh, in many cases is Oh, well, I want to create a near account. What do I have to do to create a near account? How do I get a near account? Um, so I can create a near account right now just so you guys can see what the wallet looks like. I'm going to create example dash near dot near. I'm going to agree to our little terms and conditions. And I get to choose which way that I want to actually uh, secure the account, whether I want to use email recovery or phone recovery. These are things that actually are provided by the wallet service. When you use these types of recoveries, we actually store a record in our Postgres instance that will allow you to recover them later. Um, but the most secure, obviously, is either to use the ledger, which I referred to earlier, a hardware vault, essentially, for your keys. Or you can use a recovery phrase in the browser, which will give you a mnemonic that you can write down your, your uh, standard 12-word uh, key phrase. And when you, uh, when you actually create the account, you follow a little recapture, you hit verify and complete, and you've created an account. Rather than create an account right now, I'm just gonna switch over to my wallet where I actually already have an account. Uh, and just give you a brief look at the, uh, the UI for this. You can see, you can see recent uh, activity. This is driven by the Explorer. Uh, it's actually is running queries against the Explorer uh, backend to give us um, recent transactions. And in fact, if I click on any of these, then you can see it's a direct link to the Explorer, it actually loads a copy of that transaction so I can see what, what I was doing. And the rest of the UI is uh, provided by, by us here in the wallet team. So tokens, if I were to hold some bananas, for example, I could see that, that balance here or wrap near. Any other tokens that I add in here, if I were to uh, transfer some ETH or something like that uh, using the, the bridge, then I could actually see them listed here. Uh, staking interface is really straightforward. It's a really simple interface where I can see, you can see I've got nine near staked with ever stake here. I can see the amount of rewards that I've gotten. And if I wanted to stake with a new validator, then this UI exists that would allow me to stake with a new validator. I could choose, hey, I want to stake another one near, uh, or whatever, whatever amount that I wanted to stake. Obviously I could stake whatever I want. And this is the, the basic guts of the, the wallet. You can see my account details allow me to see overall uh, balance. So how many near tokens I have, which ones are in staking pools. And also it allows me to add stuff like um, uh, 
recovery uh, methods. So I could add a phone SMS recovery method or use a ledger. These are the keys that I was referring to, the fact that you can see uh, what keys have been added and why why they've been added. So this is like from a D app called Pluminite. And this is an app called Fairy Club. And this is the, the main like administrative API or interface that most people would see whenever they want to come in and, and just mess with their account, kind of view what's here. If they wanted to send near to another account, that's done via the wallet as well. It's basically a very nice thin wrapper around common operations that that you might do. But the other thing that it provides is the ability to log in using uh, the near wallet. So this is Berry Cards. Uh, Berry Cards is an app that allows you to purchase cards uh, that were generated by Berry Club, which is like a, a a farming kind of pixel pixel farming kind of game where you can uh, buy com the community actually will buy individual pixels and draw on them. And then once the uh, once the cards themselves uh, are in a state that is useful, then you can list these cards, you can buy them for a certain amount of near and you will own them. Uh, so I can sign in with near wallet just to show you what this looks like. When I click sign in with near wallet, you can see it redirects me to the wallet.near.org. So now we're in the wallet code base and it can see that I've already got my account selected. I can choose any of the accounts that I have here. And I'll click allow to allow Barry cards to access my account. This basically just gives them the ability to see what tokens I have available. And it also uh, has a small allotment. If I go back to the account details, it has a small fee allowance that gets uh, assigned here. This is you know, part of the login process is that it adds a, uh, an access key that Barry cards can then use. Uh, once you've logged in, now it knows who I am and if I want to vote on these things, I can say, hey, I like this one better. Uh, I think I like this one better. I like this one better. These are doing posts to the blockchain. They're actually communicating directly with the Berry cards uh, backend. And if I come into the wallet here, then I can see here's my most recent, here's an access key added. This is me logging in. And here is me voting for specific cards. Uh, here's my request. I voted for the left. This is the very card. So this is a brief introduction to the wallet um, from a high level. Does anybody have any questions about this stuff? I'm happy to go into any more detail if anybody else has any questions.